Film photography is a trend. Film prices are at an all time high. And I would love to be able to participate in the wonderful world of film photography, but it smells like broke. If you remember basic economics, it's no surprise that film prices are as high as they are. We've seen a massive rise in people purchasing film cameras and film stocks to take photos to post on social media over the past few years. And whether we contribute it to influencers or Gen Z being Gen Z, it doesn't change the fact that we are at the peak of film photography. And it's wonderful to see so many people appreciate the art form. It's one that I've appreciated for a long time. And it's one that I wish I could participate in myself. But with film stocks being so high, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, at least. For some people, film is their medium. It is their way of artistic life. And for them, it's not a trend. But on the grand scale, I think it is. And if you know anything about trends, you'll know it happens in a pendulum swing. And I think right now we're at the peak swing for film photography, which is why we're seeing prices so high. We're seeing, it seems like everyone's feed has some sort of film stock at some point on it. And I think we're at the point where we're gonna see that pendulum start to swing the other way. We're already seeing a major discussion in the photography world about what photographers are going to be doing to go around these prices. Some have discussed purchasing expired film and other more complicated films that I don't quite understand. Then there's also been a discussion of, for personal work, shooting on little like Digipix, Digimax sort of cameras, which I'll get into more later. And also shooting on black and white film has been one because the film stocks for those aren't as expensive as colored film stocks are going for. And then also we're seeing a lot of people switch to digital. But today I wanted to talk about my three ways on my substitutes for film, if you will. And my first substitute is I edit my digital photos to emulate film. I've created these color presets that I use. And when I created them, I took a lot of inspiration from movies that were shot on film or existing film stocks to try and emulate the colors as close as possible while also also putting my own twist to them because I'm very picky about my, how my colors look and I know that I can't emulate film perfectly in digital anyways so it allows me to have some little wiggle room and then another thing that I like to do is I like to slap on some good old digital film grain which I know some people hate but I love it I feel like digital photos can look a little flat sometimes and this just gives it a little more texture and then my second alternative to shooting on film is one that I mentioned earlier, and that's having a little digipix or, you know, 2000s point and shoot. I have been using one since I made my video shooting on a 2005 Samsung, and I love it. I loved making that video so much that I decided that this is just going to be a camera that lives in my purse. And so whenever I go out with friends, I take pictures on it. Obviously don't use it for professional work. It's purely for personal enjoyment. And part of the reason that I wanted to start carrying it around and using it more was because I really enjoyed seeing the photos around the house of my parents in the 90s and early 2000s and the way that those photos looks they're just very candid and very personal and I wanted to be able to preserve memories in that way. I also don't have a problem with things looking dated. I love looking back at photos of myself when I'm younger and knowing like that is a moment preserved in that time, but it'll just, it'll have that feeling of nostalgia in a different way than what film does. And I really think this goes with my prediction from earlier, but I really think because the whole like Y2K in fashion is super big right now and on social media that it'll bleed in to these cameras, um, which I'm really surprised that people haven't been 
using them more because we've seen older technology like, you know, over the headphones. Um, I'm surprised Walkmans aren't back personally, but like the, the over the ear headphones and I've seen like iPod shuffles and nanos come back, but not in like a practical use, but more as like an accessory. Um, wired earbuds, like those little things in technology, just that's the next thing to come back. And I'm surprised it's not. And what I like about using a Digimax is that I don't have to send film off to be developed. I can just, you know, I come home after a wonderful day out with friends where I've been taking photos and I can put them on my computer, I put them in a little Dropbox and then I have them on my phone and I can post them. So it's like the turnaround is really fast. It's absolute no cost to me. I don't have to go get something developed. I love harsh flash photos. One of my favorite things makes me so happy because they look kind of bad, but in a good way if that makes any sense. So if you don't have a little point and shoot, maybe run and go get one now before they start being super expensive, just like film. And then my last alternative to film is I have a paper camera. And my paper camera is a new addition to my camera collection. I got it for Christmas and I've been trying to, it's got a learning curve to it. It's not like when you're shooting on a normal camera where you can look through the viewfinder and see what your photo is gonna look like. It's a, an approximate little cutout and it's not entirely accurate. So, you know, sometimes you get a photo and you're a lot, cause it's a, it's a wide lens. Um, so sometimes you're a lot further away than what you thought but there's something kind of fun with that because it's it's kind of like when you shoot on film you don't quite know what that photo is going to look like until you get it back because there could be an exposure issue um, you don't quite know what the colors are going to look like because film stock colors don't match what we see with our eyes so there's kind of a surprise element with that but because again it's a digital camera i don't have to send film to go get developed or try and develop it myself, which is a whole other skill I do not possess. And the fun thing about the paper camera is that it has some like filter settings. So you can have the like normal color mode, which is not my favorite to be honest. And then there's like a green tone, a blue tone, and then black and white. And then you, I have not messed with this setting at all, but apparently you can do a time lapse or something. I don't know. It's a, it's a very interesting camera to use. If you have one, if you know, you know, they are a bit pricier compared to probably, you know, digging up your old family Digimax or buying one off eBay. But those are my three alternatives to shooting on film. And I'm very interested to know if you think film is a trend to the extent that I do, or if you are heavily against film being a trend at all and that it's a way of life. If you stick around to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to see more, go ahead and subscribe, leave a likey like, all that good YouTube jazz, and I'll see you next time. Bye!